Hello and welcome to Uv TV. Today's episode is all about banana cables, banana plugs, and those leads you use to connect power supplies, multimeters to different things. We're going to show you how to make your own to specific lengths and a few tips and tricks to save you money. Okay, today we're going to be looking at banana plug cables, commonly used with power supplies, multimeters and that sort of thing. Um, this is the sort of thing we're talking about. This is a 4 mil red banana plug cable. As you can see, it has a 4 mil uh, plug on the end, which plugs into the power supply socket or multimedia socket. And on the other end, it has the same thing. Now, these usually come with multimeters and power supply units, but the one I've just bought happened to not have them with it. So I need to make myself some new ones. So you may be asking, don't they usually have a crocodile click on one end and a banana plug on the other? Yes, they do. But you'll find, little tip, that if you put a banana plug on both ends, it gives you a lot more flexibility because the one end plugs into the meter, but the other, you can plug in all sorts of attachments. This is a, a crocodile clip attachment. So you have the benefit of a standard crocodile clip, but also there are other things like, um, this is a multimeter attachment for gripping onto finer components. So with a banana plug on the end, you've got a lot more variety of attachments you can attach to the same cable rather than making a different cable with different things on each end, clips, alligator clips, and so on. One cable with different attachments is a much more efficient and much cheaper option than making lots of different cables. So again, these sort of cables come in a standard length generally of about a meter, but the advantage of making your own is that you can make them whatever length you want. I offer, uh, my, my power supply is quite close to my bench, it's just basically here, so having a long meter cable just gets in the way. So I prefer to have a shorter cables for my bench power supply. So as well as making the standard one meter, I'm going to make some shorter ones today just to show you the process. So first of all, we need two things. We need banana plugs and we need cable. So let's look at the, cable, the banana plugs first. So the type I use are quite simple. Let's zoom in and have a good look at those. So it's a four mil plug with a plastic shroud, which the cable goes in. You unscrew the shroud and it gives you a little, little hole. If you fill that hole with solder and then put your tinned wire into there, that makes a very quick, easy connection. Other banana plugs I've seen have different methods of fixing. Some use a crimping terminal, which crimps the wire and then has to be soldered separately. Others have a screw in the body of the plug, which screws directly into the cable. But personally, these are neat and they give a really strong bond, unlike the other methods. So I prefer to use these. So the cable, Obviously, you choose a cable which is suitable for the uh, the current that you're going to be using. So, I use this. It's very flexible. It's, it's, a, it's the same cable used in multimeters, so it's good up to a thousand volts. So we're going to cut the cable to. Let's do a. I'm just quickly measure from my meter to the middle of my bench. So that's about that long. So we just cut the cable. Now here's an important tip. As I've said, these plugs come in two parts, the metal plug itself and the plastic shroud. So it's important you put the plastic shroud on the cable before you start attaching it. The number of times I've very neatly soldered on the plug and then realised afterwards I haven't put the plastic shroud on and I've had to desolder the wire and start again. So make sure you put the plastic cover on before you attach the wire to the plug. So. I'm going to use some little helping hands just to hold things. So if we strip off approximately a quarter inch of the wire sheath, just twist those together. And we'll just hold that in the helping hands for the moment. Let's zoom in so we can see a bit better. And 
you just turn that wire, so we'll just take a bit of solder. You may have seen our other video, wire stripping and tinning, which goes into this in more detail. So first of all, let's just tin the iron with a bit of solder so it makes good contact and touch the, the bare copper wires with the iron and feed in some solder until it turns a nice silver colour. And that's the wire all tinned. Okay, so the other end, we're just going to fill this little hole with solder basically. So if we grip that in some helping hands again, and we need some solder. And if we just basically heat up the plug on the side with the soldering iron, just so it, it heats up before we start introducing the solder into the hole. It'll take a while because it's quite a thick piece of metal, the plug. So put your solder in the hole and you'll feel it start to um, feed in once it reaches sufficient temperature to melt the solder. So I can feel it going now. You see that's stripping into there. So push it into the hole. Oops. And we just want to fill that hole with liquid solder. So again, repeat that until you get a full hole. And as you can see, that hole is now full of liquid solder. So we take the wire we've just tinned, and then we just very simply, keeping everything nice and straight, press the, again, heat up the solder so it starts to melt. And then push your wire into the hole, into the liquid solder, and remove the heat. And just hold it there, because again, it's a lot of solder, so it'll take a while to, to to uh, harden properly on like a small solder joint. So if we remove that from the clamps, you can see that is now nicely soldered onto there. So we'll do the same with the other end. Oops. Make sure your plug doesn't come off. So again, remove the plastic shroud, sleeve, whatever you want to call it. Put it over your wire first, make sure you put it the right way around so the threaded end, so the threaded end is on the end of the wire. So again we'll strip off about a quarter of an inch and just tin that. Take the other plug and just hold that in the jaws of the helping hand. Exactly the same procedure. Heat up the plug and fill it with solder as it heats up. Don't press too hard with the solder otherwise it'll just bend under your uh, push and it makes it difficult to get in. So. Just be patient, you'll feel it eventually go. There it goes. If it pops out, just start again. No big deal. There we go. So we have one little post full of solder. So again, if we take off the cable we've just tinned, and if we just reheat that little Post again, banana plug, push in your cable and remove the heat, keeping a hold of it for a few seconds. So that's basically it. Um, once they cool down, you can slide along the little plastic sleeves, screw that on. Same with the other side, and oh, it's still a bit hot, so be careful. 
So there we have it. A purpose custom made to about 700 mil for my own personal requirements. Now to buy cables like this in the shops, you're talking two, three pounds, up to 10 pounds, depending on the retailer. But to make it yourself, you're talking less than 50 pence to make a, a cable to do your exact length requirements. So much better value. So try it. Hi, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you'd like to see more, please click the video over here. Also, why not subscribe to our channel? We release videos three times a week on subjects about electronics, making things, building things, just having a good time in the workshop. So why not click the button below and subscribe? Thank you.